Elon Musk just confirmed something that left NASA speechless. China's Tiangong space station might be the most advanced orbital outpost humanity has ever launched. While the ISS took contributions from five nations and decades to build, China constructed theirs independently in just two years. What did they do that made even Musk take notice? The technological gap looks like a century's leap, yet only twenty years separate these two stations. How is that even possible? And the recent breakthrough they pulled off? That's what nobody saw coming. Back in 2011, the U.S. Congress made a decision that would reshape space history. A Department of Defense spending bill explicitly banned NASA from any bilateral cooperation with China. The official reasoning centered on national security and human rights concerns. But Washington had another worry that kept officials up at night. What if China gained access to decades of American space research and turned it against Western interests? China's response wasn't what anyone expected. Instead of protesting or seeking compromise, they quietly started building their own space station from scratch. The ban that was designed to slow China down became the catalyst for something far more significant. Within a decade, they had Tiangong operational in orbit, and the technological leap left experts stunned. The core module Tianhe launched on April 29, 2021, weighing 22 metric tons and stretching 16.6 .6 meters long. This wasn't just bigger than China's earlier test stations, it was nearly three times heavier and represented a generational advancement in space engineering. The module came equipped with a sophisticated docking hub handling both Shenzhou crew capsules and Tianzhou cargo ships, plus a large robotic arm that executes assembly tasks and assists during spacewalks with precision that took other nations decades to perfect. How did China compress what took NASA and its international partners years into mere months? Wen Tian arrived on July 24th, 2022, followed by Meng Tian on October 31st, 2022. These two massive science modules transformed Tiangong from a basic outpost into a comprehensive orbital laboratory. The entire assembly happened without a single international partner, and that's what makes it remarkable. China built this alone while managing one of the world's most complex engineering projects on an 18-month timeline. Inside Tianhe, the engineering tells a story of long-term vision. Regenerative life support systems recycle water from every possible source, including urine, allowing crews to remain in orbit for extended periods without constant resupply runs. Integrated propulsion systems prevent orbital decay while maintaining the station's precise altitude between 340 and 450 kilometers. Every system was designed for endurance, not just demonstration missions. The current T-shaped configuration supports three astronauts, but China's plans extend far beyond this baseline. At the 74th International Astronautical Congress, the China Academy of Space Technology unveiled expansion blueprints that signal serious ambition. The station will grow to six modules with a multi-docking adapter featuring six ports attached to Tianhe's base. This transforms the layout into a cross-configuration, doubling internal volume and research capacity. The expansion enables more experiment racks, larger extravehicular operations, and capabilities that match or exceed what the ISS offers today. Supporting these plans is the Mengzhou spacecraft, China's answer to both crew transport and deep space exploration. This modular design carries up to seven astronauts and comes in two variants, one for low-Earth orbit missions to Tiangong, and a heavyweight lunar version weighing 26,000 kilograms designed to carry three astronauts to lunar orbit. That lunar variant will dock with a separately launched landing system, creating a complete architecture for moon missions. On June 17, 2025, 
China successfully tested Mengzhou's zero-altitude abort system at Jiuquan, demonstrating crews could safely escape even during catastrophic launch failures. An in-flight abort test during maximum dynamic pressure is scheduled for later in 2025, proving China is methodically validating every safety system before committing astronauts to lunar missions. While China builds for the future, the International Space Station faces an inevitable countdown. NASA's crew, 11 recently docked at 2.26 a.m. EDT after launching aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 with the Dragon capsule Endeavour completing its sixth mission. Commander Zena Cardman leads a crew that includes veteran pilot Mike Finke, JAXA's Kimia Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov, joining seven astronauts already aboard. But these routine crew rotations mask an uncomfortable reality that everyone in the space industry understands. The ISS has outlived its design life by more than a decade. NASA spends roughly $3 billion annually just maintaining operations on aging infrastructure that grows more expensive and difficult to support each year. Critical components wear out, replacement parts become scarce, and engineering challenges multiply as systems designed in the 1990s struggle to meet modern research demands. NASA and its international partners committed to extending operations through 2030, but that's not a celebration. It's a retirement date. This creates an interesting dynamic. By 2030, Tiangong could be the only government-operated space station in orbit unless private American companies succeed. NASA is investing hundreds of millions into firms like Axiom Space and Blue Origin to develop commercial stations, with first modules potentially launching within years. The agency will eventually select one as its primary partner, shifting from station operator to anchor tenant. This transition frees NASA's budget for deep space missions, lunar bases, Mars preparation, and beyond, while private industry handles low-Earth orbit infrastructure. These future commercial stations will incorporate 25 years of ISS lessons. Modern compact electronics enable cleaner layouts instead of the cable-filled chaos visible in ISS photos a result of retrofitting new equipment into decades-old spaces. Axiom's design includes a massive cupola where astronauts can float their entire bodies for immersive Earth viewing compared to the ISS's small dome where only heads and shoulders fit. Medical research capabilities will expand significantly since cells age faster and diseases progress more rapidly in microgravity compressing years of Earth-based studies into months of orbital observation. The technology enabling all this has advanced dramatically. Assembling the ISS required dozens of space shuttle flights over many years, with modules launched individually and connected through complex orbital choreography. SpaceX's Starship could potentially deploy an entire small station in one launch, fundamentally changing construction timelines and costs. Tiangong is designed to operate for at least 10 to 15 years, serving as both research platform and staging point for lunar missions and deeper space ventures. While the ISS counts down to decommissioning, China's station enters its operational prime with expansion actively underway. The 2011 decision to exclude China from international space cooperation was meant to protect American leadership. Instead, it created a competitor that built something more modern, more efficient, and potentially more capable than what already existed. The question now isn't whether China can maintain a space station. It's what they'll accomplish with it while others rebuild. So here's what we're really looking at. China was banned from the ISS in 2011, told they weren't welcome in humanity's most ambitious space project. Fourteen years later, they've built a station that's more modern, more efficient, and designed for the next decade of space exploration while the ISS prepares for retirement. The decision meant to keep China behind instead pushed them ahead. 
This isn't just about who has the better space station. It's about what happens when competition replaces cooperation in space. The ISS represented unity, five space agencies, 16 nations, decades of shared achievements. Tiangong represents what one determined nation can accomplish when the door gets slammed in their face. Both stories matter, and both tell us something important about where space exploration is heading. The ISS will retire by 2030. Private American stations are coming but aren't operational yet. Tiangong is expanding right now. For the first time in over two decades, there might be a period where China operates the only fully functional government space station in orbit. Whether that concerns you or impresses you probably depends on your perspective, but nobody can deny the engineering achievement. We're not at the end of the space station era. We're watching it transform. The question is, who shapes what comes next? What's your take on this shift? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this video opened your eyes to what's happening in orbit, hit that like button and share it with someone who needs to see this. And subscribe to Atlas Space because this story is far from over and you'll want to be here when the next chapter unfolds. SpaceX hit 150 launches in 2025. That's more than any nation or company has ever done in a single year. They're saving 45 to $50 million every time they reuse a booster instead of throwing it away. Do the math across 150 launches. That's up to $7.5 billion saved in just one year. But here's what nobody's talking about. This isn't just about saving money. How is reusability actually funding their real trillion-dollar plan? And what happens when other countries can't keep up? Before we go further, subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Because what SpaceX is doing right now is building something that will change who controls space for the next century. Let's start with the launch that made history. Mission 150 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. It was a rideshare flight carrying around 140 small satellites for different customers. The rocket climbed, separated its stages, and the first stage booster came back down for a controlled landing on a drone ship in the Pacific. Nothing unusual about that, except for one detail. That booster had already flown 29 times before this mission. Think about that for a second. The same rocket, launching and landing, 29 times. What does it mean when a single piece of hardware can replace what used to require building 29 brand new rockets? Here's where the numbers start to tell a different story. SpaceX has now landed boosters successfully more than 540 times across Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. Just five years ago, flying a booster five times was considered pushing the limits. In 2023,